everyone. We are going to go over meiosis now using these beads. So hopefully you've already watched uh, the video on meiosis um, so you kind of have an idea of how it works. We're going to do uh, this now where we look at uh, some differences between mitosis and meiosis. The first thing I want to note out here is that in meiosis you get what are called crossovers where you don't um, in uh, mitosis. So we're going to see crossovers which means that these two pieces of DNA are going to get exchanged. Um, the other thing about meiosis is that we're making gametes or sex cells. Uh, so in order to do that, we're going to reduce the chromosome numbers to half. Uh, so what we're going to eventually have is that the homologous chromosome pairs are going to line up together. And in meiosis one, they're going to separate from one another and go to opposite cells. Okay. When they do that, the formation of the new cells are only going to have half the number of chromosomes from their parents. Um, so meiosis produces haploid cells, half the number. All right, so um, we already have them lined up in their pairs. So that's the first part. And in prophase that happens. And then in prophase is where crossovers happen. So I'm going to do a crossover here. I'm going to pull these two apart and exchange them so that a little bit of dad's yellow chromosome is now linked onto mom's red. And a little bit of mom's red chromosome is now linked onto um, dad's long chromosome. Okay, so here they are. I've done a crossover. Uh, this crossover uh, happens very often. Crossovers on the ends of chromosomes happen very often. In each cell, it's going to happen at least once somewhere on one of those pairs, either high up or lower down, somewhere. All right, so these are, these are really common things. But for this particular example, we're just going to pretend that it happened one time right here. Okay, so this other chromosome does not get a crossover today. All right, so they've had their crossovers, they're in pairs, so that's essentially what happens in prophase. And then what's gonna happen is that they're gonna line up um, down the middle at the equator. We've got spindle fibers already forming, and they're gonna line up in their pairs or in their tetrads, their four chromatids, right? They're kind of like four chromatids here. Um, they're gonna line up and eventually they're gonna pull apart. The homologous chromosomes are gonna pull apart from one another. All right, so this is metaphase one. So in your lab, you have these two circles, figures two and three, where you're gonna draw metaphase one, and you're kind of drawing it in two different ways. So this would be the first way. Now, by chance, when I drew this, I drew it so that the yellow chromosomes are gonna go up that way, they're lined up to go to one side, and the red ones are gonna go down. That could happen, okay? So we're gonna draw this for our first example. The other way they can line up is if by chance, when I was drawing the, or when I was moving this, I did it this way, where now you've got dad's long chromosome and mom's short chromosome that are gonna go up and mom's long and dad's short that are gonna go down. Okay, that would be the second way. All right, so you're going to draw both of these ways, both of these examples, um, and make sure when you draw them that you've got one of them where on one side it's all red except for the crossover, right? And then on the other one, it's one of each. So what we're going to do now is get, we're going to do meiosis for both of these examples. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my first example. Here's my yellow, 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 except that little crossover, right? Red, 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 except that little crossover. All right, so in anaphase, my homologous chromosomes are going to separate. This is anaphase one of meiosis one. They're going to separate with the spindle fibers being pulled to opposite poles. They kind of line up like that. You might have seen them sort of looking like this with the onion cells. And then eventually... They're going to pull apart some more, and that's telophase. We're going to end up with cytokinesis, right? So that's going to be telophase two, or I'm sorry, telophase one. Um, and then eventually you're going to end up with two cells, okay? Right after telophase one, the cell is going to enter straight into prophase two. So there's no interphase in between them. So in prophase two, um, it's basically look to new cells. It's a really short phase, um, and eventually the spindle fibers start forming and this one's going to go through uh, metaphase and this one's going to go through metaphase. So let's look at the yellow one first. Okay, metaphase it's going to come and line up down the middle and then anaphase two, 
right? Spindle fibers and then telophase. And we get the formation of two new cells. One cell, two cells, okay? So these cells, everything we did in meiosis two um, were the formation of tetrad or the formation of haploid cells, okay? So even when they were together, this is a haploid cell because this one's missing the long red and that one's missing the short red. Even when they separate, all that separated were the exact copies. So they're still gonna be haploid cells. Okay, so that's two cells that are formed. Let's do the same thing with this other one. Metaphase down the middle, let me move these back a little. Metaphase down the middle, anaphase pull apart, telophase all the way apart. So now we have one, two, three, four cells. So those would be the four cells that you would draw out for gametes on the next page. Okay, notice that they are not identical to one another. Okay, so we have straight hair, blue eyes, no freckles, straight hair, blue eyes, freckles. Curly hair, green eyes, freckles. Curly hair, green eyes, no freckles. Okay, so all four are gonna be genetically different. So again, you can just draw these with lines, yellow long line, yellow um, short line, put in the traits, do the same thing for the reds, okay? One, two, three, four. Doesn't really matter what order you put them in, but those are the four gametes that you're going to draw. Now remember, this was one way metaphase can happen, right? We had a second way, so let's go back. I'm gonna put these back together and do the other way. Still have our crossover. We still have our tetrads, okay, and these. And remember, the first way was like this. The second way, the red is on top with the yellow. The yellow is on the bottom with the red, right? That was how we drew our second metaphase on um, figure three. So let's do anaphase one, telophase one, formation of two cells, that's prophase two. And then we're gonna pull these apart, right? One cell, two cells, three cells, four cells. So one, two, three, and four. These cells are different from the ones we already drew out, right? So if you put the traits down and draw them, you'll notice now you've got blue eyes, no freckles, curly hair. We didn't have that before, that combination before. We didn't have this combination. We didn't have this combination or this. So once you write these down for your next set of gametes in the circles and then putting the traits down, you should notice that these four and the previous four are all different from one another. And that is the end of meiosis.